It's the third Saturday of the month, which means we're back for Game Club yet again. I'm your host, Boston. Joining me as always is Moonpeer. Hello. And Musum. Hey. Uh, this month we're going to be talking about Owl Boy. Uh, let's get all the good stuff out of the way here first. Released on PC November 1st, 2016. Sort of trickled out on everything else sort of every yeah. couple of months after that. Uh, developed and published by d Studio, a studio of about four people, five people, I, I just looked on their website. Came out on PC, OS X, Linux, Switch, PS4, and Xbox One. Uh, in my notes section, uh, I wrote, famous for its incredibly long development cycle. Uh, it was about ten years, long enough that it was written in XNA. <laughs> so, wow. <laughs> That gives you any idea. Uh, it was supposed to come out on the 360 originally, and uh, oh wow, missed that by a, a couple of years, by about half of a generation. Part of me wonders, like, because uh, in the credits of this game, it is one of the, I think it's the bass player is credited as Phil Spencer, and I, I'm torn between checking if that is the Phil Spencer. I wonder, it, I wonder if it is. That'd be so fun. Yeah, <laughs> I license this game and play bass. Yes. Uh, time travel. Metacritic is 89. Open critic is 88. That is high. Uh, oh. Appears for the release date. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, uh, which means that probably everything else in this list got smacked down. Uh, Dishonored 2, Watch Dogs 2, and Final Fantasy 15. So that was, that was a wow. hell of a month. <laughs> yeah. We thought 2017 had the games, but man. 2017 does have the games. Come on. That's true. The That's rule right. of sevens. Yeah. Uh, top of the pile, middle of the pack, or middle of the pack, or overlooked. I, uh, if we're talking about the public perception of it, this thing was top of the pile because the second people started playing this, they wouldn't shut up about it. But if we're talking about what we think of it, <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. I was actually going to say middle of the pack before I saw the reviews for this, and everyone's like, "Platforming is back. The return of 2D games." I'm just like, did. Okay, I thought this kind of was a flash in the pan, but maybe yeah, I was, see that I remember. I was reading uh, Kill Screen Daily's article earlier today on it, mm -hmm. and they are just lavishing praise over it. And they actually, like, they made me like it a little bit more than I actually, I mean, I, I'm kind of indifferent to the game for the most part. But, like, the things they were pointing out was... Uh, Oh, we have this disabled main character who has to depend on other people to get by, and sure. we like that because in real life they have to do that. And drew some analogies there, and I'm like, okay, I'll That's give you, point. I'll give you that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get into uh, what we liked and what we didn't like of Owl Boy. Um, Are we gonna do the reverse normally? Because normally we end on the negative, but normally the negative is a very small section compared to the positive. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just hit it up at the start. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I, I want to go first. I, yeah, you go first. <laughs> Owl Boy, to me, Owl Boy is the cautionary tale of a small team or an individual developer being too married to their ideas. Because half of this game is really good, and half of this game is some of the most frustrating 2D platforming I've played in decades and where the game is really good is i think almost all the bosses are really great and have clever mechanics except for maybe that blob boss that was maybe a little too easy and maybe i don't understand why it, the stuff was closing on the walls but other than that you know like the first boss i thought the first boss was really great where you're pulling off the shell and you're shooting it and keeping the shell away that i didn't even realize until moon Pier told me you could just like yep you pick could just up and, the shell away yeah toss it to the other side of the room um but then like as soon as you do that like the whole first dungeon as an example is really great and the yep. intro is really great and you get a lot of story and then you hit that stupid gnome part <laughs> <laughs> and that's like the beginning of the end for this game for me. L literally an hour into a game that I think took me about six hours to finish. Well, mm -hmm. to be fair, full disclosure, I didn't finish this because there's a section at the very, very end where you're going through like the up in space owl temple library place. Mm -hmm. 
and you drop down and you open this thing and the wind is pushing you back and a bunch of rocks are flying at you yep game would crash every time i would push that button <laughs> so like okay i couldn't i had to, oh, I had to wow. watch the last 15 minutes on youtube uh Musum, what was your platform of choice i'm guessing boston's was yours pc ps4 ps4 uh, i i did it on switch Okay. okay, how how was it on Switch? Because I have some issues with the controls in this game. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm curious how it was on the Switch. Um, I thought it was fine, uh, but at the same time, I also don't like the controls for the game. Period. Like, I, I don't like yes. the jump physics in it. Yeah. Everything like nothing in it feels good that you're doing really, except the visual like feedback of oh cool i just pulled up a plant or yeah, oh right. i didn't realize i could pull that up or oh cool that thing exploded it's but like physics wise none of it felt good on the controls so yeah i, I wrote this mini rant in my notes here <coughs> I, I thought the i thought the jumping felt okay the arc was very long like it felt a little floaty which <laughs> he's an owl he can fly although he's not really an owl i guess i don't know we, i don't know Spoiler alert, Owlboy isn't the dude you're playing as anyway, so... Yep. <laughs> you know, whatever. Yeah, that um, was a surprise. <laughs> the thing that drove me the most crazy about the controls is the game, during the very intro, teaches you to fly, you just double jump. So on PS4, you hit X twice. Mm -hmm. But that's not the only way you can fly, because you can also hit X and then hold up, and that will also make you fly. So if you're holding, I did not know that. if you're holding that up like I always am, because I just I'm. When you're in the air, you don't use like X and triangle to go up and down. You're using the the analog stick. So mm -hmm. I'm always my brain is always thinking, oh, well, I'm just gonna fly, so I'm gonna hold up and then double tap X. The first time you press X and you're holding up, you start you fly flying. You, you hit X and you crash back to the ground. And yep. Where that kept screwing me is the whole middle half of the game where you're hiding from those robot pirates one time after another where it's like, okay, perfect, I can fly. Nope, I landed on them. Cool, poison gas. Yep. Um, the, I don't know if it's just my controller in this case, but based on everybody's everybody's issues with the controller, shall we say, it, of the, the I played it on the Xbox One, and that version is loose as yes. all kinds of controls because it the issue i kept running into was when you start motion he starts really quick and then seems to slow down and get into like a rhythm mm -hmm. of speed like he just starts quicker then levels it a little slower when you're navigating i don't know a corridor full of spikes or thorns i literally hit every single thorn yeah because yeah that acceleration, I'd be like, okay, I need to go past this stupid mollusk thing that's moving left and right. <laughs> Get past that, but because of the acceleration, I'd immediately hit the thorns, and then, okay, go right. Oh, no, hit those thorns. Okay, go up. No, no, hit those thorns. <laughs> it's just, so full I, disclosure, when I got to the darkness area with the thorns and the darkness that damaged you when you hit mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. I just said, screw it and watch the rest of the game. That's I don't blame you. <laughs> completely understandable. And like, one, of it, my, one of the weird things, too... Moon, what you're talking about with the controls is, and I sort of understand why they did this, but I sort of don't, that <clears throat> your character moves faster the more health you have. So if you have full health, especially when you're doing the like dodge roll mechanic, you move way faster out of that. So you have two movement speeds in this sometimes pretty precise platformer, and man, that killed me so many times. <laughs> I'll tell you, the first time I ran into a waterfall, I did not understand why it was not flying. Yep. Same yeah. here. They did not explain that at all, that you couldn't fly in the waterfalls. It took me so long to figure that out. And once I figured it out, I was like, oh, okay, like, he looks a little... like He's got the the drips. Yeah, yeah. like, it, if the water is very much pushing on him, and his face sort of looks like he's a little burdened, but... I, yeah, I, I, that's the problem with Owlboy, <laughs> is there's so much of this little stuff that all adds up, like, if there was just that one section with the gnomes, or that one section on the Dreadnought where you're 
uh, avoiding the pirates, that's fine. But every dungeon in every new area has something like that. It has some sort of BS area like uh-huh. that that just ground me down until I it, the game just won. <laughs> the game well, beat me. Well, I mean, we look at the um, the darkness area. There's a perfect example of this. The gnomes, okay, fine, whatever. It's a quote-unquote stealth section. It feels yeah. like this game is trying to be a little bit of everything. But when you when you get to the darkness area, it would be one thing to just have it be dark and the walls be flat or have it brightly lit and have all of the walls be spikes. Mm-hmm. Why do you need to throw the two things at once? Right. Like, it seems like it's just... like It feels like they're trying to harken back to the old days of... You know, when we're going to have this nice, easy, like, fun, enjoyable section, just like all the old games used to have, and then we're going to kick you in the teeth because that's what the old NES games used to do. Right. You used to get to level three and then die. <laughs> yeah. Also, this is the second month in a row we've had a game with darkness sections. <laughs> I do not appreciate <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, that's a really great point because when you look at Owlboy versus Shovel Knight, Shovel Knight did that a, a great job at bringing your nostalgia to the modern age Mm -hmm. but smoothing out the edges where moon i think you have a really great point where it's like all right this is a fun tutorial look how great this game looks oh great i'm gonna punch your lights out you know like this is platformers used to be hard and we're bringing that back and sort of like well they don't need to be like that anymore and i think i think part of what I think is really interesting about Owlboy is, except for that darkness dungeon, I think the level design in a lot of those dungeons was actually really good. And the yep. it was, there was unfortunately no map, but the dungeons were sort oh. of small enough and laid out well enough that for most of them, I felt okay if I did it in one sitting. If I did it in two sittings, I was looking up a video guide and just, like, I had, uh, there was no way I was finding it. But when you take that dungeon that was in the darkness so much, you have to simplify the layout because yep. you literally cannot see where you're going. And it gets even better because on that dungeon thing, um, on that light section, when you get to the split and the, the little fairies that you're supposed to follow, like the little fireflies, one mm-hmm. goes up and one goes down. If you follow the one that goes down, it goes to the right and it's a little rough section. But there is a lamp on the right-hand side at a dead end that, if you light it, it lights up the rest of the area for you. Oh. Not so you can not so you can see, but so that you can see the spikes, and you can see the walls rather than it being pure dark. Right. Well, in that area, I was good with like it was the area later where you get the weird bug swarm in, and I was just like, eh. yeah, and, and yeah, no, that's the area I'm talking about. Like where when you're I, well, I think the place where it diverged two paths didn't that happen before the bug swarm though. Honestly, or does the bug either. swarm happen a couple times? Because I know oh. I, I reached a path where I had two lights diverge, and I said, well, screw it, I guess I'm following this one. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, Maybe they I had didn't... a second instance, and I just reached my limit. And... <laughs> well, and yeah. there was the weird just... part of that at that dungeon, too, where you're eating the glowing fruit that sort of makes <clears throat> you glow a little bit for a set amount of time. It just... Oh, I didn't know that. I just carried it around with me. Yeah, yeah you could it. eat it, and then you could you could pick your friends back up and and do mm. it. But like that's that's one of the innate problems with Owlboy is I feel like it it is expecting you to uh, experiment with mechanics, but never really gives you an opportunity to do so safely. Yes. So it's sort of like okay, I can carry this fruit, and the level is going to stop killing me. I'm not going to do anything else. I'm just going to keep going through it. Because if I drop this fruit, I'm going to die in two seconds. Like, yep. th- there's an expectation there that uh, I don't feel like the game ever really earned. Mm-hmm. I, I feel a bit bad saying this, but the funny thing for me is... By the way, the section you're talking about by, where it cra- kept on crashing for you, Boston, it crashed three times for me in that exact same place. Wow. Um, you press the button, the wind starts, uh, and then I, it crashed. And one time I fell off the edge and it crashed. One time it <laughs> crashed right there, and then um, the third time I think it crashed when I was halfway back across. I kind of broke the last level of this game, if I'm completely honest, because mm. and 
I think I think this should have been in the game a lot earlier. The, if you collect all of the Buccaneer coins, the last reward you get is a sparkly cloak, which is okay. an owl cloak. And when you do the dodge move or when you do the spin attack, it turns you into a shadow and the, your attacker radius is much bigger. Oh, okay. It also makes you invincible. Oh, oh, wow. Nice. So while you're in that shadow form, you are basically invincible. So I literally <laughs> did a lap around the entire thorn section, touching the edges of the walls, just hitting B to dash all the way through. Right. Didn't do a single spot of damage. And the last boss got two hits on me. Nice. So... I don't... <laughs> Man, I that, that makes me wish I'd tried to get everything, but I kind of did a... My attitude went in a U-shape on this game, and that it started mm -hmm. at the bottom, because I didn't know anything about this game going in. Yep. Yeah. But I knew the cover art, and I despised the cover art for this game <laughs> on the Switch store. <laughs> so when I heard we were doing this, I was like, oh, that looks so terrible. Then I played it, and I'm like, okay, the writing's a bit heavy-handed with, mm -hmm. your, with your trainer guy hating you so much, and... I I, I still have a... Uh, sorry, I'm going to take a tangent here. I I like the majority of the characters in the game. Like, Alphonse is probably one of my favorites. Yeah, I like Twig. Twig is really great. But I think Osseo is... Throughout the entirety of the game, is so horrible to Otis. Mm-hmm. For really no reason. Like, at some point... He's saving the world, and Osio's like, okay, well, maybe next time don't try and break the world, stupid. And I'm like, but, c I mean, come on! <laughs> Out of curiosity, on the video you watched, did you see the ending that had the white ghosts? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, there's really only one ending uh, that okay. I found. Because I, I was a little disappointed by the ending. Um, mm -hmm. And I wasn't disappointed by the story up until the white ghost dream time. Yep. I, I I will give the, the game some credit. I thought the lore was really interesting. I liked this whole floating continents and the owls of old, you know, were breaking the universe and they made these robots that are now the pirates. Like, the, a lot of really fun twists. I didn't think Solus was a guy up until the very end. Um, I thought Solus was a lady and... Yep. I think it's kind of fun that that was Owlboy and not Otis. Yeah, that's a really good moment. Yeah, but I think I think it's a little bit of a cop out for the game to especially at the end bring forward like all this stuff about the hex and anti-hex and the loop and all this cool lore all of a sudden and then at the end, you know, Shadow Osseo tells suddenly speaking Otis that it doesn't really matter what the loop is, like, don't worry about it. It's like, well, it seems pretty important because it almost destroyed yeah. the universe, so... Uh, no, it's the owls just almost destroyed the universe because they wanted to break the loop. That's the loop fair. just seems like a natural order of things. It's probably the whole circular nature of, like, the expansion and contraction of the universe. That sure. could be considered a loop. And well, then... they, uh... There's a user who did a bunch of like lore research on this game and oh, posted okay. basically an essay on the Steam forums and <laughs> like basically has this big theory that Otis broke the loop like oh, whenever he fixed everything at the end. But I don't remember the specifics enough of it. Yeah, because it almost seemed like with the very end of the game that <clears throat> it could be that he either broke the loop or that the way that the game began was the start of the loop again. Like, Otis was mm -hmm. always going to be stuck in this this thing he was always going to do. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I do want to give two compliments to it, though, at least. I... Like, um, I really like the art style and animation style. Yes. Yep. Um, it's beautiful. It doesn't necessarily always communicate what it needs to, but it's still gorgeous. Yeah. Yep. Um, the music, especially that ice level. When I you're was going to the... say, yeah, Misos is the best piece of music I've heard in video games this year, in my opinion. Yep. That's I don't know if I'd run that beautiful. far, but it's definitely really, really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, ice level music is always the best. Like, <laughs> that's true. Ice yeah. levels <laughs> are the worst. It's the counterbalance. Ice levels suck. Ice music rocks. That's true. Yeah. Like, my favorite piece of music from Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is, like, when you go to the ice titan thing in there. But anyway. <laughs> um, let me see. Yeah, that was my two compliments. So I want to yeah. I want to leverage one last 
negative on the game before I start hitting my positives. Riding that giant middle snake boss was the worst. <laughs> that was easily the lowest point in this game. That looked pretty uh, annoying in the video. It, yeah, it, it was. was hard enough, like, up up is up and down is down on the D-pad, on the, the analog stick. And then it starts <laughs> flying upside down, and down is up and up is down. Uh-huh, that was it's not it's good. The, it's the inverted versus non-inverted argument in one section of a game. <laughs> you get both of them? Yes. Yeah. Um, I... I... I was surprised at how much I liked the story because I feel like so many, um, this isn't a pejorative, but like so many indie developers have, are married to the story in their game and it's either too thin or way too heavy handed. And I feel like mm -hmm. other than the intro, Owlboy struck a pretty great balance. I think because your three companions were so interesting. Um, yes. Getty probably being the worst of them, but he was still a little bit fun. Yeah. Did you get the key and see the snow cave thing? No. No? No. Uh, the drumming guy in Virile, if you play his drums in his house, the same notes that he is playing them, mm -hmm. he drops a key which opens the question mark area up in Misos in the ice area. Oh. Where you can investigate the wall, but you can't do anything. Right. He drops a key that opens that, and you go in there, and it's a chest containing the drumming guy's brother's remains and all their last possessions. Oh, that wow. he, The drummer guy left there because his family is entirely, entirely dead because of the cold. And he talks about how he wants to, you know, take his the the music that they created together and enlighten other people with it. And it's this really touching moment between like the the three companions, Otis, and realizing that it's the drummer guy. His family used to live there, right. but because of the temperature spike, which oh, I've just realized why that place turned cold. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> Because the land was kept on going up, so the place that used to be a forest turned into a cold area. Yeah. Oh. Uh, but yeah, that was a great. Uh, that is one of my favorite story sections in this game. Is when they go there and they have this really touching moment, um, talking about the this guy's dead family and the the effect that his music has on everybody else in Virile and how that guy, kind of he brings joy to everybody there and hmm. there's this really touching moment where they're talking to basically the graves of his family wow that's really good i'll have to go watch that mm -hmm. it's really kind of cool that sounds uh, cool but, but yeah i mean like you guys said the, the music is great like i wasn't expecting the music to be as good as it was i thought mm. the first first couple of loops were very repetitive but yeah the the mesos area is just incredible the the game like the graphics like the the way it's the art design in it is incredible as well the animation is top notch there's so much art in it too like for yes. something that is has to take a painstaking amount of time to create there's so much in this game mm -hmm. and i want to like it's like i want to compliment them because some of the like you said the first dungeon design is incredible the the volcano dungeon design i actually really like as yeah, well i like that minus too. Minus the fact that touching the lava is an instant death. That's yeah, bad design. Yeah, and checkpointing wasn't nearly as good in that dungeon as it needed to be. Mm -hmm. I feel like the game kind of failed a lot on checkpointing. Like, there yes. are a lot of times I yeah. died where I'm like, you really should have put... <laughs> like, you guys brought up the gnome thing earlier. Like, if they'd put a checkpoint in the middle of that thing, yeah. I think that would have helped. Yeah, definitely. Because you guys, like, I'm pretty sure you guys did the same thing I did, where you made it halfway up your very first ta ta time. And then one of the stupid ones caught you, and it's just like, oh, great, I've got to do it all again. I have to yeah. try it again. Like, they've got, I think they've got a good, a really good foundation for games in the future. They've obviously yep. got really talented, like, art team. They've got a really talented, like, audio team. I just think that they need to work on, and I hate you phrasing it this way because it sounds so trite and cliche, their... They've just got to tighten up the, the controls, make yep. it feel a little better to play, rather than just being a visual, like, dopamine rush. Super Meat Boy is the prime example of it feels good to control that game. Yeah. It 
did not feel good at almost all of this game to control the the people, especially when, for example, stupid stuff like you want to start shooting your stand on the floor, you have to start flying before you can summon one of your compatriots to actually do damage. Right, it's or like, like summon them and then pick them up and then start flying. Mm -hmm. Like it was, and I, I think one thing that I I actually really did like is switching the companions and sort of especially during some of the boss fights like there was the boss fight against Dirk the in the the dreadnought where yeah. you know you're you're using uh twig to use his grapple to sort of switch places with the boss to kind of fly opposite walls so you could sort of yep. block his daggers that felt really great and then once he's done switching over to Alphonse to kind of do some damage to him like the switching and the the puzzle mechanics between switching with the people and carrying them around felt really good but mm -hmm. you know you move a lot slower when you're picking up Alphonse or when you're carrying Alphonse and sometimes Twig so a lot of the times I was just dropping them in the abyss and then just kind of <laughs> moving on by myself which didn't maybe feel like in the spirit of the game yeah trophy reference you're a bad boy <laughs> yes but i i do agree with you uh moon where d-pad studio is someone that if they make a second game i'm gonna be pretty interested because yeah. you're right the foundation is there the art the music the the engine you know it, it, except for some of the crashing stuff we had at the very end which i'm surprised it hasn't been resolved um that stuff is all solid it's just controls and design which probably the design can be shored up in the second game because it's a lot of okay well it's our first game and it's it just took forever and maybe we sort of couldn't see the forest for the trees on some of this stuff but they announced that they're coming out with another game i, I that i'm not gonna say like well they made owl boy so chuck them in the bin yeah. you know not that but could be pretty interesting no, it, there's a lot of positives here, and I actually, I would be interested in seeing what they do next. I'd probably end up watching watching things to do with it before I actually picked it up yeah. to see if they fixed the issues I have. But yeah, I'd want to see a gameplay video. <laughs> like, well, I'd, I'd probably want to see reviews and and sort of. I don't. I feel like the reviews on Owlboy were way higher than mm -hmm. I would ever have felt for it. Like I. Yeah. Very much disagree with them on some aspects of it. So. I was going to see if uh, Giant Bomb I mean, reviewed Owlboy. I think for me, this is. I know we don't put numbers on, but for me, this is a this is a middle of the road game. This is a five out of ten. Like, yeah, yeah. it's it's got really astoundingly beautiful and amazing parts, and then it's got absolutely horrific tear it down from the foundations parts. Yep. So for me, it just sits dead center of the road. It's like it's a it's a middle of the road game. It's, it's a really good, good game, and it's really bad. So yeah, and I feel like if this game had come out on the 32x or the Sega CD, game of the year, game of the generation, like it would have really captured us at that time because all of this would have really uh, spoken <clears throat> to how games worked then and and not the whole thing but it really harkens back to that day like i was like to that era sort of felt like i was saying that shovel knight doesn't um, mm -hmm. it's just sort of a shame that it it wasn't a little the design and the expectations weren't a little bit more modern yeah yeah it it ultimately to me came out as as kind of bland in the end like the aspects yeah. i liked about it at first were just taken down by the issues we've already talked about here and like i you know there's some potential there but it's not something i think anyone should necessarily go and, and spend their time with if they mm -hmm. don't have a lot so yeah I'm, yeah I'm especially i think for me i'm mostly disappointed because i've been looking forward to you know when owlboy's trailers came out on 360 it looked exactly like this and yeah. that game coming out on 360 would have been revolutionary. I mean, this was before, you know, even before Braid or Fez or, you know, the real indie, the, the start of the indie explosion. And for it to come out and be okay is just kind of a real bummer. Well, that nails it then. Like you said, they, they made a, like, this feels and plays like a 2007, 2008 kind of game. Yeah. 
And that's both positive and a negative. Yep. It makes you wonder, like, because usually when a game development goes this long, it seems like they've completed the game and then decided, no, this this can't be it, and so they've gone back and changed significant things. It makes me wonder what that original like playthrough was like after the first couple mm -hmm. of years. Yeah, because I was reading uh, an interview. Uh, I stumbled across it trying to figure out how many people were part of the development studio, and the the main guy, Simon something. Um, said that basically they restarted that game completely a number of times because it was taking so long and they were getting increasingly nervous about how fans would react to the game coming out after being in development for so long so it, it got in this horrible catch-22 of this like anxiety yeah. over this game taking so long and not being good enough so it took longer and <laughs> increased anxiety it it <laughs> It's that's the positive uh, the, again. That's a positive and a negative for the big studio model. Where mm -hmm. big studio model is in general, if a big studio spends you know two hundred million or a hundred million or whatever producing a game over the course of like five years, that game is coming out no matter what condition it is in, right? Good or bad. Whereas small studios like this, I mean, we saw the same thing. I'm not sure if Musum if Musum's read Blood, Sweat, and Pixels as well, but if you read the section. I yeah, if you read the section on um, Stardew Valley, yeah. you'll see a very similar like thought process there, where it's one dude making the game and he's like putting a bunch of time into it, and then all of a sudden he stops and works on something else. He's like, no, no, the people are not going to like this section, right. and he he completely changes his objectives because the influence of the community affecting a small number of people versus a huge studio is kind of very severe yeah so i can understand why they did it but at the end of the day is it feels like a 10 year old game yeah yeah i, I would recommend i i think that's a really great point that number one go read blood sweat and pixels by jason schreier it's it's really good number two i think that does shed light uh especially that stardew valley chapter about like I have been sitting alone in my house for 12 hours a day during my free time making this thing. There's no way it can be good enough. Uh, I'm the only one that will like this. Whoops, it's actually a giant hit. <laughs> you know, it's yep. a, that, that anxiety and that mentality behind it. So that that's a really great point. Uh, anything else you guys want to say? It sounds like I think we've sort of all spoken our piece. Yeah, I think I'm pretty done. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really have much. <laughs> I honestly didn't come into this with a whole lot to say about it. Uh, well, let's talk about our next game. Uh, this is a uh, an uh, an odd month, so we're uh, this was a randomly chosen game. Our next game is Unravel uh, for PS4, Xbox yes! One, and PC. Moon Pierce. Oh wow! Moon Pierce pick. This one, I believe, is is pretty short, which is great. And Unravel Two just came out uh, last yep. week during E3, so. Uh, never a better time. Yes. How long would you say it is, Moon? I did the 100% on it, and I think I did it in 10 hours. Okay. I think you can probably beat this game in about four. Perfect. Like, if you're in the mood for a quick playthrough, puzzles aren't too hard. There are some tricky sections in it, but it's probably about four hours worth. Okay. Maybe yeah, I, six. I actually just purchased it uh, this morning on PSN, and it was $5. Uh, oh, wow! For the next couple days, it is ten dollars off. So, um, uh, E three sales are sort of going crazy right now. So you might want to, if you're listening yeah. to this on release, you might be able to scoop it up for very cheap. I think it was part of Games with Gold a while ago, right? Uh, I believe it was, and if it wasn't, it's definitely on EA Access. It's in the vault if you're an EA Access right. member as well. Yeah. So for a couple of bucks, sort of anywhere you can get it. It's probably on sale on GOG and. Yeah, uh, for the record, How Long to Beat has it as Main Story 6, Completionist 11 and a half. Okay, sounds about right. All right, so uh, we will reconvene in four more weeks to talk about Unravel. And, uh, I look forward to this. <laughs> yeah, and we will see you next month. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.